Today we're going to talk about patterns and sequences. So let's talk, first of all look at this word here, this word sequence. So what does sequence mean? Well, say over here, if you look here, I've just got this whole pile of numbers and they kind of jumbled up any old town. It doesn't matter which is first and which is second and which is third. The difference when we're talking about a sequence is that we do care about the order in which they're written. So, for example, we could take that jumble of numbers and we could say, look, the first number we want to think about is 23, then 19, then 15, then 11, then a 7. And this now is a sequence because this is the first one, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, and this is the fifth. So in a sequence, order matters. And sometimes when we have a sequence of numbers, we can spot a pattern in what is going on there. So can you spot the pattern here? Uh, hopefully it's fairly obvious, right? That to go from 23 to 19, you took away 4. And from 19 to 15, you took away 4. 15 to 11, you took away 4. And 11 to 7, you took away 4. And so you could think, well, the next, pa next um, term in the sequence would be 7 minus 4. And so your next term in the sequence will be 3, if the pattern continues. Okay, so the important thing with sequences is that we're very clear about this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one, this is the fifth one, this is the sixth one. And sometimes, just to make that very clear, we use a certain um, notation, a way of writing things. And this way of writing things is we say that term number one, we write like that, term number two, term number three, term number four, term number five, term number six. So for example, here we could say in this sequence we're looking at term number two is 19 or term number four is 11. So this is just this little thing here just talks about what position that you're in. So let me just quickly write another sequence for you. So let's consider this sequence where we go 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96. Okay, so can you spot the pattern in that sequence? The pattern in that sequence, hopefully you can see it, is just every time you're going, you just multiply by 2. Let's check you've got the terminology, the notation right. If I asked you, what would T3 be? So I'm asking you, what's term 3? I'm asking you, what number is in position number 3 in the sequence? You can go, it's 1, 2, it's this, the third one over here. So term number 3 is equal to 12. What would uh, term number five be? It would be one, two, three, four, five. It would be the fifth thing in the row, which would be 48. Now, one of the things that we are particularly interested in is if we can use the pattern that we see in a sequence, so like if we consider this one where each time we were just subtracting four, can we see a pattern in that sequence that will let us know, say for example, what the hundredth term will be, or what the 302nd term will be? Now obviously we could just carry on and on and on going subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract 4 and keep on doing that until we get to term number 100 and then we'll know what it is um, and we can even go further and go to term number 302 and we'll know what it is. But we want to see if there's this nice kind of regular pattern of subtracting 4 each time, can we find an easy way to be able to get to these terms number 100 or 302 or a million and five. And that's what we're going to be looking at over the next few videos. But in order to do that, I want to just stop and go back to something we did a while ago um, so we can see how these sort of patterned sequences come from rules. 
So, okay, so I want us to have a quick look at a table of values and we'll see the connection between a table of values and the sequences we were looking at just now. So, let's fill out this table of values. Uh, I want you to do it because there's actually a, a table just like this in your book, so I want you to fill that in. So, for example, if you want to fill in what's here, well, we know that n is 1, so we must calculate 3 times 1, which is 3, and fill it in here. Okay, do the rest. Okay, so hopefully you did this. 3 times 2 is 6. Here, n is 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. n is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. n is 5. 15, 3 times 10 gives me 30, here 3 times 100 is 300, and 3 times 1000 is 3000. Now here is where we see the connection to sequences. Can you see, we have a sequence here, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. This is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and we've got a sequence, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 15. So can you see this formula here has generated a very nice sequence for us if we just look at what's happened when we have n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4, n is 5. So out of this formula we can generate a sequence. What we are now going to have a look at is how we can go back from seeing a sequence and seeing what formula generated it. Okay, let's see how we can now go back from a sequence to getting the formula. So what I have here in this table is I've just neatened up uh, exactly what we had on the previous one, right? We went and filled in everything for 3n and we got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then we have 30 for 10, 300 for 100, and 3,000 for 1,000. Okay, now have a look at the sequence I've written below. It's a 4 for, num for 1, a 7 for number 2, a 10 for when n is 3, a 13 for when n is 4, and a 16 for when n is 5. I want you to pause the video now and see if you can think about what formula might have generated these terms. Pause the video, talk to the person next to you, and see if you can figure it out. Okay, hopefully you guys have been looking at it and seeing, look, this 4 is just one more than the 3. This 7 is just one more than the 6. This 10 is just one more than the 9. This 13 is just one more than the 12. So all we've done is we've taken this thing and added on 1 to it. But what is this thing each time? This thing is just 3n, and then we've added on 1 to it. And can you see how that tells us exactly what to do to get the tenth term? Because it'll be 3 times 10 plus 1, which gives us the 31. Or the hundredth term, 3 times 100 plus 1 which gives us 301. Or the thousandth term, 3 times 1,000 plus 1 gives us 3,001. So what we've seen is we can take a formula and generate a sequence by putting in the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, for n. But we can also just as well take a sequence and go backwards to figure out what formula it was that generated it. And we're going to be working with this and seeing ways to get to this um, as we continue. In the next video, we're going to focus on the link between the two ways of seeing those sequences, the patterns in the sequences. The one way we've been looking at is we see that to get from one term to the next here, for example, is adding 3 each time. The other way is this formula that we've developed. And what we're going to see in the next video is how to link up these two ways of seeing the pattern. The one that goes from one term to the next and the other one that gives you a formula 
that allows you to put in the term number and figure out what the term is actually equal to.